Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about AWS CloudFormation intrinsic functions. And to be specific, I'm going to talk about function get attribute and ref function. This is the fourth part of my CloudFormation series on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't checked the first three parts, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to be posting the links in the description. And I'm also going to be posting more videos in this series. So look out for that as well. So let's jump in. First of all, I'm going to take you to the official documentation page for the intrinsic function, right? Uh, it tells you that CloudFormation provides several built in functions that help you manage your stacks and function uh, get attribute and ref are two of those functions that are built in CloudFormation. Now, I have a GitHub repo where I have prepared some resources for this video. Let's start with ref, right? This is how you declare a ref function in CloudFormation. As you can see here, if you're using JSON, which we will be doing this uh, video on my template, you just say ref inside curly brackets and provide the logical name of the resource that you want to refer to, right? That you want to reference. And YAML, the format is something like this. Ref function returns a value that's predefined for each resource. Now, this is the most important part, I would say, um, you know, separating ref and get attribute because I get asked um, sometimes, you know, what's the actual difference, right? And I, I think if you understand this, then I think it's going to be the easiest to differentiate get attribute and ref. So ref returns a value that's predefined for each resource. For example, if your EC2 instances had a logical name of EC2, when you ref your EC2, you know, you'll get the instance ID back, right? If you ref on an elastic IP resource, it will return you the IP address of the Elastic IP. A few more examples on what you get when you refer to the AWS resource. In the case of subnet, you get the subnet ID back. In the case of VPC, you get the VPC ID. In the case of S3 bucket, you get the name of the bucket. And let's say you ref the IAM user resource, you get the username. So, you know, you refer to the logical name, that's all you do, and you get a predefined value, right? Predefined. Now let's move over, over to uh, get attribute. All right, this is how you declare get attribute function, right? In the JSON format, you say function get attribute, and then you provide two things, right? This time you provide two things. Firstly, you provide the logical name of the resources, just like we did here at ref, right? This is here as well. But then you also have to provide a second um, value, right? You have to provide the desired attribute name, right, in the second field. So not only you provide logical name of the resource, you also provide the attribute name. Now, unlike ref, get attribute has two fields. Ref has only one field. In the case of EC2, you can choose from, you know, these attributes. You get to choose from five attributes, right? So not only uh, you get the instance ID, with ref, you got the instance ID back. You know, from get attribute, you can get things like the availability zone, uh, private DNS name, public DNS name, private IP, and public IP. Why don't we look at an actual template? So uh, I'm going to be you know, referencing this repo in the discussion as well. So, you know, you will have all the files that I'm looking at right now. If I go back to the homepage of this repo, I want to go into one of the templates that I have in here. It's called VAVPCCF.JSON. Now, this template launches a VPC with, you know, internet gateway, uh, subnets, public and private subnets, route table and EC2 instances, security groups, you know, a lot a lot of resources. It launches three instances 
Now we want to find out examples of ref and get attribute just to give you a better idea of what I was talking about or earlier. Now the first time I use ref in this function uh, is right here. When I'm creating the public subnet in this template, when I get to the VPC ID, which I need to provide to create a subnet, since I don't have the VPC ID yet, you know, I use a ref function to refer to the VPC resource. This is the logical name of the VPC resource right here, right? So I'm referring to VPC. So after the VPC is created, that value will be passed in here so that you know the subnet can go inside the VPC. So this is how ref is used. Now I also have another file in the main folder called Sydney VPC elb.json. If I click on here, and I'm gonna go all the way down to the end of the template. And here you can see under the output section, you know, which we've talked in the previous video, what happens in the output section. I'm using the get attribute function to, you know, get the value of the DNS name of the load balancer resource, right? So load balancer is right here. And since I want to output the DNS name of the load balancer, I don't have the DNS name of the load balancer until the load balancer is launched. So I use the get attribute function to say, you know, give me the DNS name of elastic load balancer, right? So that's how you use get attribute. So if you wanted to get the private IP of your EC2 instance, then just like in the previous um, file right here, you would say get attribute and pass in private IP or public IP if you wanted the public IP, right? So get attribute, logical name of the resource and one of these things in case of EC2 instances. So that's how you use ref function and function get attribute in cloud formation. I hope you know this cleared uh, all the confusion you had about those two things. And once again, you know, one last time, I want to say that ref can, you know, only take in the logical name of the resource and it will return you a predefined value. With get attribute, you can, you know, choose one of the attributes of the resource. That's all I have for this video. Don't forget to check part one, two, and three if you haven't done already. I also have some Udemy courses, uh, you, you're free to check them out. I'm going to link those courses in the description. If you browse through my channels, you'll see some free uh, Udemy course coupons floating around. So you're, you're welcome to do that as well if you want. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.